Hey guys, what is up? Alex Scott here with Concertini.com. Thank you so much for checking out another one of our super cool studio gear reviews. Today we are taking a look at a unit I absolutely love. This enormous beast is the Universal Audio LA610 preamp EQ and compressor. So it's effectively a whole tube channel strip all in one unit. This thing sounds awesome, especially if, like me, you love gear that has a really old school vintage kind of dark characterful vibe to it. This particular unit was loaned to me by my father for, out of his recording studio up north of where I live. Uh, he uses it in particular on vocals all the time, absolutely loves it. Um, I've used it many times working in his studio and I love it as well. So he uh, let me come pick it up, borrow it for a couple of days so I could show it off to you guys and do a quick demo with it, show you guys some of the features. You know, again, this unit is just awesome. We've got a classic UA610 preamp front end with the top and bottom shelving EQ and then a compressor that very closely emulates the classic LA2A compression circuit with the T4B OptoCell. So it's just a whole powerhouse of vintage tube vibe. It's an all tube unit, definitely gets hot. <laughs> but uh, regardless, let's go ahead. I'm gonna stick it on top of my rack here and let's just run some signal through it so you guys can kind of hear how the, how the front end sounds, how the compressor sounds, all of that good stuff. Let's go ahead, scoot the camera and check it out. Okay, guys, so here we have our beautiful UALA610 channel strip. This thing is so cool. I love how it looks. It's so vintage and retro. It's got such a cool vibe to it. So big fan there right off the bat. Well, let's just go over the features on the front panel real quick here. So first of all, we have basically an impedance selector, which also functions as your input selector. On the back, we just have a mic in, a line in, and an output all on XLR. Very, very simple. Uh, but I do really like that they've included a dedicated line input. It's really, really nice because if you want to use this as a mix down device or anything like that, you can just go straight into that line input, not worry about you know sending phantom power to your interface or something like that. It's a very handy feature there. But this is gonna give you on your mic input, we have either 500 ohm or 2K ohm impedance, depending on what type of mic you're working with. Then we can switch it to line. Then we have two different impedance settings for our direct instrument in, our high Z in, 47K or 2.2 mega ohm. So I have it set to line right now because I just have a vocal pulled up in my software, real simple female pop vocal that we're gonna use to kind of check out the tone. So that's kind of the first thing that we've got. We've got, you know, again, our, our instrument in here, our, our DI in. Then we have 48 volt phantom power. We have a phase invert, and then we have a 15 dB pad if we're working with a louder signal. Then we move on to gain staging. So we have a coarse gain up here, which is in five dB increments from minus 10 to plus 10. And then from there, we have our, you know, more kind of fine level control. Now you can do some really cool stuff with this where you can drive this, you know, turn the pad off, drive this at plus 10, and then between the gain knob over here, which is our output, and then our preamp fine gain here, you can really use these to dial in how much tube drive you would want in your signal. If you want it to start crunching and distorting a little bit and get some real great saturation, you can push it harder or you can be a little bit more gentle with it. So some really, really nice uh, options there. Then we have our EQ section, which is really simple, but surprisingly versatile. We have a high shelf, we have a low shelf. High shelf is at 7K, 10K, or four and a half. Low shelf is at 7,200 or 100. Kind of irks me the way that they've arranged those numbers because the highest is in the middle, so that's a little counterintuitive, but whatever. And then we have stepped pots here for all the way up to plus nine or minus nine on either of those shelves. So it's designed as a really gentle sculpting EQ, you know, to be used during tracking or as like a really gentle kind of mix device. Um, definitely not something you're gonna be doing surgical EQing with, but that's not what it's designed for. Then moving on, we have our compressor section. And if you guys have ever seen an LA-2A or an LA-3A, any of the classic UA compressor designs, this peak reduction and gain layout is gonna look really, really familiar. It's dead simple to use. You just dial in how much gain reduction you want and then how much makeup gain you're using. Now, even if you're not using the compressor, this gain knob here still functions as the master output gain of the whole unit, which is cool. Again, it, you know, you have three knobs here that you can use to gain stage. So if you wanna drive stuff really hard, you can, or if you wanna leave stuff pretty clean, you can as well. And then finally, we have uh, metering, what our meter's showing, either output, how much compression is doing, or input to the preamp. 
and then we also have a compressor mode so we can bypass the compressor compression or limiting and those two settings are just like you would find on an LA-2A. It is an all tube design it does have a T4 optical cell in it so you're getting that classic LA-2A sound just killer. So let's go ahead we'll bypass the compressor for now and let's listen to our vocal. But it comes out almost every time Still the teacher says Now I'm hitting it stay in the a little bit hard. So that's what you're hearing is just a little bit of that natural tube saturation, which is really crispy in a cool, very vintage kind of a way. So we've got a little bit of that going on. And again, I, I'm just doing that to taste. You could certainly dial it back and get a much cleaner sound, or you could go even more aggressive with it and really start to push the tubes. But let's go ahead and start working with this EQ a little bit. Well out of bounds. But it comes out almost so right here, I'm, I'm just adding some 10K, which is really nice and really airy. Still the teacher says... 7K? You gotta stay in the line. So a little bit more rounded. Blow your 4.5K, which to me is almost getting down into the upper mids. Oh my, that which only is found. Well out of bounds. All three bands add some really, really nice air to the top end, and that's what you get with a vintage style kind of shelving EQ. Now, the low end, we won't be able to hear much below 200, but let's just uh, play with it a little bit. So we'll take away what we're doing. Actually, no, we'll leave plus three at 10K because I really like that. And let's hear. But it comes out almost every time. So now we're adding Still, now we're adding 3 dB at 200. Still the teacher says you got to stay in the line. Very classic vibe. It just does a great job of warming things up. Let's go a little further. Plus 6. Blow your mind. That's really nice. And that's a that's the mark of a great EQ to me is is that you can push it that far. You can do plus six, even up to plus 10 dB, um, even, even more on some EQs. And it still sounds really just natural, smooth, clean, really, really nice. So let's go ahead and start working this compressor here. We're going to switch it in. We'll start with just uh, basic compression. That which only is found well out of bounds. But it comes out almost every time. Here's without. Still the teacher says, you got to stay in the lines. And it's got that signature LA-2A sound, gooey, rich, uh, adds a little bit of warmth to things, and just really evenly rides that signal. Let's try it on limit. But it will blow your mind. So we can see we've got a higher ratio going on. That which only is found well out of bounds. But it I really, really like how that limit sounds. I actually like it a little bit more than the comp. It just really grabs things and does a great job of gluing things together. So as you guys can hear, it's got a ton of vintage vibe to it. Uh, just really, really nice uh, kind of crispy old school tube sound. Um, on most of the pots, these are the only two pots on the unit that aren't stepped. These are, are fully variable, um, but all the EQ stuff, and I guess the, the preamp fine gain here isn't. This coarse gain, all of these knobs are all stepped, which I really, really like, especially if I'm using it as a, as a mix down device. That helps to make recalling any settings a lot easier than if they were all uh, fully variable pots. A few of them are, and that's totally fine, um, but having a few step pots is a very, very nice feature. Okay, guys, so there you go. Our Universal Audio LA610 preamp, EQ, and compressor. This thing is just such an awesome all-around solution if you just need one really great channel of, you know, for tracking, for mixing, whatever you're trying to do. So if you're a vocalist, particularly like a rock vo vocalist uh, would come to mind, this is going to be a phenomenal unit to just serve as an all-in-one chain. You go in with your mic, you can do phantom, you can do some basic EQing, you can do a little bit of compression and then send it into your DAW as just a ready-to-go signal that you're not really going to have to do much with in post. And it's surprisingly flexible. Even though the controls are pretty simple, as we saw in the demo, you can still get a lot 
lot of different tones out of this thing depending on how hard you drive the tubes, uh, what you know frequencies you select on the EQ, all that kind of stuff. You can you can pull a lot of different sounds out of this thing depending on what you want to do with it. Great for vocals, great for bass, great for a guitar DI. Um, and if you had a pair, I would kill to use this thing on like drum overheads or piano. It just gives you so much really authentic, rich, old school vibe. So that is the story with this guy. Highly, highly recommend it. This retails for, I think, around $1,800, maybe $2,000. Definitely a little bit more expensive on the price spectrum uh, in terms of gear. But again, like with the Bricasti reverb, like with my Antelope Orion interface, sometimes if, if you want really, really high quality, the highest quality possible, it is worth it to just save up a few of those extra pennies and go for the big boy stuff. Um, so yeah, highly, highly, highly recommend if this seems like something that would suit you guys' needs. But again, my name is Alex Scott with ConcertDini.com. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, definitely click that subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified when we upload new content. And definitely leave us a comment on what you think of this unit or any of the other modern UA stuff. I would be curious to hear what you guys think of these units. So definitely hit us up down there. As always, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.